This strategy helped me scale my multi-billion dollar business to the next level. It's called the infinite return strategy. I'm gonna show you an example of how I did this, but then later I'm gonna show you an example of how anyone can do this with any business. This is a real example of a real property that we still own today. So this is a 265 unit building that we bought many years ago. And when we found it, we found that the property was a value add. In other words, it had been kind of deteriorating for the last 20 years. And what it needed was new life breathed into it. It needed upgrading, it needed renovations and things like that. But the biggest thing is that we saw that in each unit, we could raise the rents 100 to $200 a month by just updating the interiors. So this is a 265 unit property that had a current existing net operating income or NOI. And why this is an important part to start is because this is what the bank looks at each and every time, the NOI, on how much money they can lend you because this, not you, is what actually pays them back. So this property had a $700,000 NOI and we took it to the bank and they said, we think that it's worth about $19 million. In other words, it appraised for about $19 million, of which they gave us $15 million in the form of a loan or debt. So now we knew that we needed about $4 million of equity or other people's money or investment. It could be yours, it could be a syndication, it could be some other people that you put this deal together. So those are the three things. $19 million value, $15 million debt, and $4 million of equity with a $700,000 NOI. Based on the interest rate and the loan amount, this came out to a payment of about $400,000, which of course is about $300,000 a year in cash flow. If you take the $300,000 and divide it into the $4 million, you would know that that's about a 7% cash on cash return. So in theory, this was a good deal on its own without the value add. You could invest $4 million and get about $300,000 in cash flow. This would produce about a 7% cash on cash. Not a bad investment, just as it stands today. However, one of the other benefits that you get is depreciation. And on this property, we had about $500,000 in depreciation, which gave us about a $200,000 tax loss or an NOL, which is called a net operating loss. The partnership was distributing about $300,000 a year, but it was reporting the $200,000 loss. So the partners were getting $300,000 in cash flow, but they were reporting that the property was actually losing money. This is all legal, and this is just by introducing depreciation. Of course, the whole strategy is to value add this property, which took us about two to three years. So then we went back to the bank, and the bank said, what's your NOI? In other words, again, this is what pays the bank back. And when we showed them that we had grown the NOI to 1.1 million, which is simply just by increasing the rents $100, $150 per month per unit, we were able to show that the new value was about $25 million, which was backed up by an appraisal. So then the bank says, we'll loan you $20 million against the 25 million. You take the 20 million and you pay off the 15 million that you originally got when you bought the property. And then the excess, you return the equity plus another million dollars. So at this point, this property is what we call infinite. In other words, the $4 million that we used to purchase the property in year one was now fully paid back. It's important to understand this is a return of capital. It's not necessarily profit. There is an additional million dollars of profit, but this is all done through a traditional cash out refinance. That's all this is. At this point, this is still 100% tax free because this is debt. It's owed. We did not sell the property. This is debt and this cash flow is offset by depreciation. So we have a loss here and the money we returned up to this point is all tax free. But at this point, more importantly, we're infinite. This is an infinite return using other people's money. It's important to understand that we raise all this money from other people, both the debt and the equity. So at this point, my partner and I are in the money because when you don't owe anybody anything, you now participate in all the cash flow. That's how real estate investing works. It's very important to understand that at our company, MC Companies, 
we actually keep all the partners in the deal at this point because they got us here and now they're gonna participate in the remaining fruits of the labor, which I'm gonna go over next. So at this point, now that you're infinite, we decided to keep the property and that's when we started to see rents run in this particular market. So the rents then ran from about 1.1 million to about 1.5 NOI. Once again, the NOI growth was about $400,000. Now it took an additional three years. You'll see this is a very traditional deal where rents have gone up over a period of time. We take the 1.5 million back to the bank and they say, oh, this property we believe is worth about 35 million. I said, great, how much will you loan against that? We'll give you about a $25 million loan. So once again, you take this loan, you pay off the 20 million, which is additional $5 million of profit that goes into the investor's pocket. Because again, you're using one loan to pay off another loan. It's still not taxable. It's actually pure profit, which is tax free because this loan is debt. Once again, this is a cash out refi paying an old loan. This of course, increased the mortgage payment again from 700 to 1 million, which kept our cash flow at about 500,000. If you take a look at our depreciation, it actually made our taxable income zero. So now let's just summarize. The first thing to understand is we had $2.6 million in cash flow in the six years of ownership, starting at 300, 400, $500,000. Even at the same time, we were increasing our debt by scooping all the equity and putting that into our pockets. So the second thing was, is that we took the $5 million from the original refinance, paid 4 million of that back, which was original principal or equity that we raised, plus the million, plus an additional 5 million that we did in year six. So these folks have had $6 million of profit, $4 million of return of equity, $2.6 million of cash flow, all tax free because this is through a cash out refinance. This of course was offset by depreciation and of course, today we still own the property and we still have about $10 million in equity. So a lot of people ask me what an infant return is. Well, it's exactly that. It's taking somebody's money, investing it, and then giving it back to them at a certain period of time. And in this example, you see they were able to do that by the end of year three. And so why would anybody in their right mind sell this property after year three when it's just producing money with no investment, which is essentially an infinite return. If you guys are interested in this strategy, we just created a full report on how you can get an infinite return as well by just clicking on the link below. So it's important to understand that people do this every day in small real estate deals, big real estate deals, and even businesses. So a small deal example would be to find a property that's undervalued, repair it, and put debt on it to cash out, do a cash out refi and return all the equity. You can do this on a single family house. One point of caution here, things have changed a lot in the last year because of interest rate hikes and pricing hikes. So right now, home prices are going like this, which is good if you're actually trying to do a cash out refinance. However, because of rising interest rates, it's harder and harder to do. But you can still find deals like this. For example, I found a vacant building that was worth a million dollars, was able to put a tenant in there, go to the bank with a tenant, and I was able to use the debt to be able to pay back the building and the original investor. And now I have a building that has a tenant in it that's paying cash flow, all because I took a vacant building and filled it up. The bank is loaning against the credit of the tenant and the cash flow of the building as opposed to before when they wouldn't even look at it because the building was vacant. These kinds of deals happen each and every day. Key to this deal is to find something that you can value add before you purchase it. You actually have to have a strategy of how do you create the value, let's say in year two or three or four, to be able to go back to a bank and put new debt on it so you can do a cash out refi and return all the original equity that you borrowed in the first place. Couple points here. Real estate values can go up and down, capitalization rates can go up and down, and interest rates can go up and down, as it did in this six year period. My rents were all over the place, my interest rates had changed over this period of time, and of course did the values. But what I always did was I focused on the NOI. I knew that I could grow the $700,000 NOI to 1.1 million in just a period of a few years because of what I actually bought. And then the next period, that was a little bit of a gift 
That was when the market did its thing and the rest started to run and everybody was kind of dumping out of home ownership into rentals. And this just pushed the rental market higher. And that was actually something that the market gave me as opposed to something that I strategically knew was going to happen. And this strategy works with any real estate deal or any business as long as you have the cash flow and a plan some way that you can increase the value of this asset and go harvest the money later through a cash out refinance. So what's not an infinite return is when you stick money into a bank account, in a stock market, or even with a financial advisor, because this whole strategy is based on value creation and using the bank to finance out of what you originally bought. And in those particular cases, your money is parked. And that actually is where we go get all the money. So all the money that's parked in insurance companies, pensions, or banks, that's the money that we use for debt and for equity. Most of this money in debt and equity is managed money. It's your money. And that's the money that we go do to do all of this. This strategy is not for the faint of heart. You need to understand how to do it. You need to know the cost of your funds and the debt and equity, and you need to have the right team, or you need to find people that can help you assist on this so you learn it. But this is not rocket science. Anyone can do this. Not knowing this really prevented me from scaling my whole business, but this is not the whole story. For this to really make sense, you have to understand how money works. To watch that video and learn how money works, check it out here.